gentlemen, we welcome you to the Microfossoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions along with MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the WBA, the president, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. Judging at ringside, Max DeLuca, Dr. Lou Moret, and Zachary Young. All right, fans, here we go with the main event, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles, it's time for the Fox PBC Fight Night main event of the evening. Introducing you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trunks with silver trim. Fighting out of and representing Rioco in Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. His weight 125 and one quarter pounds. His record 26 wins, two losses and two draws with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a top featherweight contender and tonight making his first attempt at a world title, introducing the challenger, Rafael Big Bang Rivera. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trunks with black trim, fighting out of Los Angeles, by way of Michoacan, Mexico. His weight, 125 and one half pounds. His record, 35 wins, one loss, one draw, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the three division world champion tonight in his 16th world title appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBA featherweight champion of the world, El Famoso Terremoto, Leo Santa Cruz. instructions we have Thomas Taylor let's go Leo okay gentlemen belt line is good there belt line is good guys got my instructions in the back protect yourselves at all times listen to my commands touch them up back to your corner gentlemen hey, Leo Santa Cruz who has held four titles in three weight classes. Record of 35, one and one, with 19 knockouts. Facing Rafael Rivera, 26, two and two. He's lost two of his last three bouts, both by decision to opponents who are a combined 43 and 0. As we mentioned earlier, a late replacement three weeks ago for Miguel Flores, who suffered an ankle injury. Lucky for Rivera, he's fighting for the full title tonight. So, not unlike when uh, when Jim, uh, J uh, Jamal Charlo fought uh, Matt Korobov right. uh, on, a, on a short notice, and Korobov put up a great fight and took him the distance. And it was a dog fight all the way to the end. And Rivera is one of these guys that stay in the gym all the time, and you know, waiting for that opportunity. And when that opportunity came, he said yes. Right, Rivera was planning to fight in March, so he had been training for about five or six weeks before he got the call. Rivera said, I am going to surprise some folks tonight. <laughs> Rivera in the purple trucks, Santa Cruz in the silver trucks with black trim. Well, he threw a nice surprise left hook to the body and head and uh, whipped off a couple of good, quick, fast combinations. But we knew this going in that uh, Rivera's got some quick hands. Like you said, he gave uh, Joe Gonzalez and Jojo Diaz a run for their money. He had a split decision against undefeated Joe Gonzalez. And, you know, right here, he's, he's going to fight for his life tonight. And Rivera, you can, you can tell that he's been in the gym, he's been training because he came out sharp. He doesn't need, he doesn't look like he needs to warm up that much. A huge opportunity on the big stage for Rivera from Tijuana, Mexico, 24 years of age. 
His first 22 bouts took place in Mexico, now seven of the last nine in the United States. Leo's just patiently right now just using his defense. He's he's feeling uh, Rivera out, which is smart. You know, he's been down this road many, many times. He's got 12 rounds to work with. So he'll start opening up later. Right now, he's just letting some punches bounce off his arms and his gloves. And then countering real nice. And Rivera's starting out strong and hard in this first round. Santa Cruz now, he's taking it easy like he did say. Thirty seconds remaining in round one, scheduled for twelve for the WBA World Featherweight Belt. I love the way Santa Cruz throws those body punches, but he puts those hands straight back up to his face and protects himself. What's listed into the Santa Cruz corner? No voltei para allá. Hey, vamos a subir el cuerpo. El cuerpo porque, hey, está bajito, cabrón. Hey, no, no te vayas a abrir porque él te está tirando. Hey, tira casi, tira por lo, por lo volado okay, y tira a la derecha. Body, hey, nice se abre bien cuando tira. Mira, empieza con el 1-2. Start with the 1-2. Okay, get started with that. And then you start the combination. You're staying two, two up. Ahorita lo vas a empezar a agarrar. You'll catch him, you'll catch him. En cada y cuando tiene el primero a la derecha y le metes el gancho y le cruzas esta arriba. Relájate. Relax yourself. Relax yourself. Relájate, boxe, 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 no, I thought he gave great instructions uh, to Leo. You know, he told him to look for the right hand, but he wants him to hit that body a little bit more. And I thought Leo did a good job hitting the body. He landed several hooks to the liver. But he's asking for the left hook to the head as well. And there goes another right hand left hook to the body. But Santa Cruz's instinct almost, when he throws a right hand or a jab of right hand, to go to that liver shot with that left hook downstairs. See, like that right there. It's just a natural film. It's just went there twice already right there. So now when you touch it, it oh, beautiful left hook. You see, you say natural, I say automatic. Automatic after he throws that left right becomes that punch right. But you notice though, Rivera, he, once he gets touched, he's coming back with his own hooks. And this is something that Santa Cruz acknowledged in the meetings, that he's a great counterpuncher, Rivera. So let's see how this unfolds as we go along. And technically, he's throwing some sharp punches as well. But I got to tell you, Santa Cruz just looks so much bigger and stronger that, um, you know, I think eventually those type of body shots might wear down. Ooh. And he's going back to the well right now with those body shots. Santa Cruz threw a punch, a right hook, which I hardly see from a lot of people. I don't really like that punch, but you know, a lot of guys can throw it well. And that's where he followed up with the right uppercut. So he, he doubled up on the right hand there. It was a nice little twist because he had been going to the right side quite a bit early on. Why don't you normally like it, Lennox? Uh, it's just a difficult uh, punch to throw. I'd rather throw an overhand whipping right hand instead of a right hook. It's just if you miss it, you've left yourself wide open. And he just did it again, actually, coming in. But he's keeping it real short, so he's limiting the, the you know, the, the counter punch coming back out of there by getting the sandbag. That's the back. only time I throw it is a short right hook. When you're inside. Yes. Yeah. Final minute of round two, scheduled for 12. Leo Santa Cruz, the champ, going up against Rafael Rivera. 
And again, Santa Cruz, he's coming right back with left uppercut right hand himself two times in a row. They didn't land, they were blocked, but you know, he's he's looking for those openings and trying to capitalize on counter punching. Ooh, body shots are wicked by Santa Cruz. 30 seconds remaining. Second round here in Los Angeles. Rivera needs to place his punches a little bit better and be more accurate with his punches because he's just really just throwing his punches and, and Hoping Santa, land. Yeah, and Santa <laughs> Cruz is just blocking them. Yeah. So he's got to place his punches a little bit better. I was going to say if the pace slows down, but the pace never slows down in a Santa Cruz fight. <laughs> Round three scheduled for 12. The champ, Leo Santa Cruz, who is 14 and one in world title bouts with seven knockouts. And Rafael Rivera, a late replacement just three weeks ago for Miguel Flores. How did you see the first two rounds, Joe? Well, it's all Santa Cruz right now. I mean. He's, he's thrown the, the harder shots, he's the more accurate shots. I think Lennox was right. Rivera is countering, but to no avail. He's, he's, he's being stymied on the counter punches right now. And it looks like Santa Cruz is just trying to break him down slowly coming at him. He's not boxing him like he said he was. He's actually putting pressure on him, backing him up. 19 on Harry Hazard's unofficial scorecard over the first two rounds. Santa Cruz worked the body. 21 of his 48 landed punches through the first two rounds were body shots, as you guys were talking about. Well, that, that's, a, that's standard fare for uh, Santa Cruz. He's a, he's a great body puncher. And if you follow, if you've been following his career, he's, he's known for that. But I got to tell you, Rivera is starting to land a few body shots of his own. They're not really being exactly effective, but they're sneaking in there a little bit. You know, the size, the size difference makes a, uh, a big difference in this fight as well for Rivera. You know, he's a little shorter. He needs to either step in a little closer or step back a little further and use his feet. Yeah, I agree. But I, just I, to stand there, he's just getting hit. And he's not, you know, when he comes back with a punch, he's not he's not getting through with his punches, so he's not doing any damage. A look at the punches landed here in the third round. Santa Cruz also has the three-inch reach advantage on Rivera. In all fairness, you know, Rivera is standing in front of a, a three-division world champion who's had 15 uh, title uh, fights and won 14 of them. So this is a very tall order for a guy who stepped in from a three weeks' notice. But, you know, again, he's game. He's, you know, he's in shape, and he's looking to win this fight. He's not just looking to uh, get a paycheck here. Man. He's looking to win this fight. But he's just having a hard time landing a solid shot on Santa Cruz. Even though those were two good body shots, he just landed that on Santa Cruz. Rivera does have an interesting background. He's an engineer by trade, graduated from the Technological University of Tijuana with a degree in electronics. This is 31st professional bout. Record of 26, 2 and 2. I think you're right, Lennox. Um, Luciano being on the inside here, he just landed a nice left hook there, and he landed a nice left uppercut a few seconds earlier. So he's 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 got shorter arms. He's got to get in close to Rivera after Santa Cruz. Three total punches landed, and effective punches landed. Well, it's it's like in the amateurs. You can you know you get a lot of credit for throwing a lot of punches, and even if they aren't effective or they're just touching punches, they aren't really solid punches. You can win. But in the pros, it's the effective punch. You know the ones that has the most effect on the body or the head. So you can throw three or four light punches, but if somebody shoots a good left hook and, and you can see it lands clearly and, and hard, you're going to get credit for it. You're going to get credit from the judges. Well, not, yeah. not the guys that score the punches. Right. Down to Rivera's corner, Felix De Jesus. Thank you, Kenny. We're with Pedro Moran, the trainer of uh, Rivera, and I want to ask him what did he see in this fight so far, and also uh, what does he have to do to win this fight? ¿Qué tiene que hacer para ganar esta pelea, Rivera? Al igual que que ha visto hasta ahora. Mira, Rafael, lo que tienes es que seguir atacando arriba la cabeza, y cuando y cuando ande ya lo daría la barra, Rafa. Cuando Leo quiera luchar cuerpo a cuerpo, 
Rafael tiene que enfrentarlo a él. Rafael has to start hitting the, the, the upper shots, the head, and then uh, slow down a little bit what he's doing right now. Back to you, Ken. All right, thanks. Great job, Felix. Felix chatting with Pedro Morant. Trainer for Rafael Rivera. And that's what Moran was saying earlier uh, yesterday when we spoke to him about the fighter meetings. He said he thought that Morris showed them how exposed Leo was to the right hand. So that's what he's talking about right now. He wants him to go to that right hand and see if he can score it. Rivera did something really good just a second ago, and that was the in and the out. He was there, and then he was not. After throwing his combinations, he moved out, and he didn't get hit, and he moved back, and he hit, and he moved out again. That's how he has to box this fight. Not standing in front of, uh, not standing in front of him. He needs some move. Oh well, yeah, because when he stands in front of him, he's taking big shots like that. To look right, him. right here. You know, he comes back with a great left hook. It does Rivera, but you know, Santa Cruz has got that right hand up so good, and that's one of the great things about the good champions is that their defenses are tight. They just don't give you opportunities to score big punches on them while they're throwing their own punches. So. Well, Santa Cruz is throwing that left hook to the body. He's got that right hand up tight, waiting for that counter hook coming back at him. Santa Cruz is also a bigger boxer as well, and he's got longer arms, so he's using that to his advantage. Agreed. Yeah. But he's bigger than most guys he, he boxes, don't you think? Manish? Yeah. Especially in this weight class. Yeah. Joe mentioned after Morris. Santa Cruz defeated him twice with the 2015 PBC Fight of the Year, and then again it. The staples just across the street last June. Ten seconds remaining in round four. For the WBA World Superweight title. Ooh. All right, let's send you back to ringside, uh, Kenny Albert and the guys there. All right, thanks very much, Kate. Along with Ray Mancini and Caleb Plant. Now we check in with Heidi Andro. Heidi. Thank you very much, Kenny. Antonio, what did you and your father tell Leo to start this round? Well, right now we're telling him just to like, like, uh, like box, you know, because he's he's better on boxing right now. He he doesn't need, need to like, uh, like draw with him, you know, like, because uh, my father's like is kind of like a little bit kind of like upset of him because he, he wants to bra and like that's what Leo wants. He, he wants to like give a fight to the fans, but uh, he's doing kind of like a like a not not a good uh, like fight for that like we did in the in the, in the, in the, in the training camp, yeah. So that's what my father's telling him, just like, like um, just boxing, boxing from one side. Thank you so much, Antonio. Guys, we'll send it back over to you. All right, Heidi, Leo's brother, Antonio Santa Cruz in his corner. And his brother's right, you know, he can make an easier fight if he boxes, but some some of these guys, they just love to fight. They just love to mix it up. They love to uh, throw a lot of punches for the crowd and perform for the crowd instead of being the smart fighters. We we'll welcome in our rules expert and unofficial scorer, Larry Hazard. Larry, how have you seen it so far over the first four rounds? Okay, after four, I have Santa Cruz ahead, 39-37. In round one, I gave the fight to, uh, the, bout, the round to Rivera uh, because he was busier in round one. But Santa Cruz, since round one, has taken over. He's uh, uh, mixing up his attack, vicious body shots, as you just saw. He's using a jab, he's coming in, he's using his experience. And All right, thanks very much, Larry. I thought that was a great assessment by, by Larry Hazard, because he is, he's, he's, he's been down this road a thousand times. And, uh, well, uh, and, and he is, he's, he's, his instinct is to fight and come forward, and he's doing some great work. And he's just, his defense is so tight, it's, it's hard for Rivera to really penetrate it. But I also agree with Boom Boom that Rivera would be better off going for broke, getting inside, trying to do as much damage as he can, and stay in there. Well, you know, the in and out worked for him. He just, he, he basically stopped the in and out. It, he, you know, he's doing other stuff. He's trying different things, but he's not realizing that certain things are working for him, which he needs to stay on. Well, his corner, Rivera's corner has been egging him. And, and, and asking him to move forward and put pressure on. So they're, 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 they're under the assumption, I think, too, that to get anything done here, they're going to have to get in Leo's chest and do some damage somehow, some way, which is not an easy thing to do. Time winding down in round five, scheduled for 12 here in Los Angeles. 
Abner really came on strong, and it, it's almost shades of a little bit of, of what Abner Mars was trying to do to Santa Cruz. You know, he's a shorter guy, like Abner Mars. Maybe not the same type of sustained pressure that Mars put on, but you know, he's he's feisty like Mars, and he's trying to get something done, and actually ran into some good right hands and a, and a great body shot at the end of the hey, round. So, right? you know, Rivera's trying get to work his way right? back into this fight here. You know, he's trying, and he's he's actually making some headway. Let's see if he can improve on it this round. He's trying to fight a fighter. So when you're a fighter, you're trying to fight a fighter, you, the fighter wins, especially if he's bigger and taller. Ooh, nice right by Santa Cruz. When we asked Santa Cruz about his opponent, he said Rivera was explosive. He could catch you with one with a quick punch. So I must rely on my defense as well. Another right by Santa Cruz. Oh. Great body shots by Santa Cruz. They just land so cleanly, and um, it, it's amazing that Rivera's not really showing a big reaction to it yet. No, he's in shape. He's, yeah. As soon as he walked in to the ring, you could tell he's in shape. His muscles are hard, and he's been in the gym. This is what he's not supposed to be doing, standing in front of Santa Cruz. And waiting. I mean, it's yeah. one thing to stand in front of him and do something, but he, he's standing there waiting, even though he just threw a good right hand left hook. Santa Cruz is just the class actor here right now, and he just, I mean, Rivera just got clipped with a, with a left hook as he left the pocket. And, you know, Santa Cruz is just so experienced. He's got so many tools in the toolbox here. But, you know, Rivera is, he's in this fight. He's not out of the fight. He could still do something that could get him back in this fight, but he's going to have to hurt Santa Cruz. He's not going to outwork him or out finesse him. He's going to have to hurt him. It's not easy to hurt him. He's got to be more smart. He's got to be smarter. Well, he's got 17 knockouts, and, uh, you know, they call it the Big Bang, and let's see if he can, you know, come up with something, because, uh, you know, he fancies himself as a puncher. Let's see, you know, I, I don't count a guy like this up. You've been in too many fights. I've been behind the wheel in too many fights, and we know anybody can hurt you at, at, at any given time. Yeah, that's true. We mentioned the 17 knockouts for Rivera. Nearly half, eight, came in the first round of his bouts. Body shot by Santa Cruz. Ooh. Rivera came back with a left. Yeah, he did. He got clipped with his own, but Santa Cruz caught uh, Rivera with a left hook, and, and he, he came back with his own. 10 seconds remaining, round six. Welcome back to the PBC on Fox. Round seven scheduled for 12 for the WBA World Featherweight title. The champ Leo Santa Cruz battling Rafael Rivera. What has impressed you, Joe, about Rivera so far? Well, that he's, he's number one, that he's given a good accounting of himself. It's everything we kind of expected from him from his past fights, that he's given really good fighters a battle. And he's hanging in there, and he's, he's trying to win. He's not just trying to survive. And um, look, I give him a good opportunity to land something sharp in the next few rounds coming up. We're in the seventh round of a 12-round fight, and you know, he's he's gonna find some more openings as go along as we go along. I don't, but, I don't see no chink in uh, Santa Cruz armor right now. You know, he's doing the right thing, he's stepping forward, his hands are up, and he's throwing punches, he's throwing combination. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I don't expect Rivera not to land some significant punches in the next few rounds. I expect him to land something good, you know? Yeah. Nobody's, uh, you know, invulnerable in this ring. And uh, whether it has any effect or not is the big question. Heidi, what's happening in the Santa Cruz corner? Well, it's really interesting, Kenny. His team just told him not to look back at them when they're talking to him. They're afraid that he might get caught by looking back. Guys? Joe, do you tell your fighters not to look back? Well, you, you get that straight in the gym, you know, because some guys do in the gym, you start talking, they, they almost stop and look at you, and you, you cure that real quick in the gym. So this, this way it never happens in a fight. And I'm surprised that they, they haven't taken, oh, that's a good right hand by Santa Cruz. But the, look at Rivera coming back with a great left hook. Yeah, he's hanging in there. 
You know what I'm really impressed as well in this fight is the referee. You haven't seen the referee. You haven't heard from the referee. You know, he's not calling low blows. He's, he's letting these guys fight. And Tom Taylor is one of the great up-and-coming referees. I really like how he's calling this fight. Or I should say not calling it. He's letting these guys fight. And to me, that's a sign of a good referee. When you notice the fighters and not the referee. There's the Santa Cruz corner. His dad, Jose. Brother Antonio. The instructions are to use the left hook. Well, you don't have to tell him to do that. He's going to do that automatically. Um, but right now, it looks like uh, Rivera's getting a little shop worn, and I think uh, I, I think Santa Cruz is getting to him now. With longer shots at will. Time, Ricky. He's just mowing ahead, doing what he needs to do, throwing his combinations. That's what he does. He's a fighter. He wants to fight. If a guy's in front of him, he'll throw as much punches as possible. After the good round eight, we check in with our unofficial scorer, Larry Hazard. Well, Kim. That's why I have Santa Cruz ahead, 69-64. Look, Santa Cruz is putting on a clinic, okay? Headshots, body shots. And fortunately for Rivera, Santa Cruz doesn't punch in a heart. He's not really a stiff puncher because he will be out of here by now. Uh, so I give Rivera credit, you know, for hanging in. But listen, the effective shots to the body, to the head, and the ring generalship that's being displayed by Santa Cruz is great. So I have him ahead 69-64. All right, thanks, Larry. So Larry did award round one to Rivera and the last six guys to Santa Cruz. I don't think you could have summed it up any better than Professor Larry Hazard just did right there. <laughs> that was really tremendous. Excellent job by Larry. 69-64, Santa Cruz through the first shot. Scheduled for 12 for the WBA World Featherweight Championship. <laughs> 16th career title bout for Santa Cruz. He's got 9 and 1 against current or former world champs. And I will tell you, you know, when Joette uh, Gonzalez, who's an undefeated fighter, fought Rivera, uh, it wasn't this one side. A lot of people thought Rivera may have deserved the nod. It goes to show you how good Santa Cruz is, because this is really a runaway for him right now. Although, again, Rivera is not giving up. He's, there's no quit in this guy. He's looking to try to do something to turn the fight around. It's just almost impossible to do against Santa Cruz. Joe, what does he need to do? Well, I mean, he's trying it. What, what, he, what he needs to do is what he's doing. He's just got to, you know, land accurately, and he, he can't do it because Santa Cruz is that adept defensively. He's just hard to hit square. It's going to take a bigger, better fighter to do it to Santa Cruz. Yeah, it has to be a bigger fighter to, to really affect Santa Cruz right now. Uh, Rivera, he, you know, he's trying. You're right, he's trying hard. But uh, I, I still say if he moved in and out, and give him and change up the distance he would be more effective well he's moving out right now and let's see what happens and then he just moved in he's fallen short when he moves in santa cruz is getting under his punches and, and countering him so i'm saying move in throw his combination move out at that time santa cruz wants to answer his punches but he's not going to be there but what he's allowing santa cruz right now is to get back at him because he's there we saw thomas hit mad herms here earlier during the Spence Garcia press conference. Fernando Vargas, Tommy Hearns. Well, Tommy Hearns was one of the all-time greats, and Fernando was such an exciting fighter. And, you know, he, he really retired young. He, he, he wasn't around that long, but while he was there, boy, did he give us some great fights. Uh, I think his son's fighting now. Yes, he is. And I hear he's tremendous. I haven't seen him yet. You had the opportunity to chat with Tommy Hearns earlier, a couple of former champs. Yeah, same, well, same trainer, so, you know. There's the hitman. <laughs> I had a fighter go up against uh, Tommy Hearns in 1981, as a matter of fact. Randy Shields. All right, now you're showing your age, Joe. Well, yeah, I was just 12. <laughs> but 
Good point. No, he was he was so big for a welterweight in that ring. He was just monstrous. But look, right here, you know, we, we were talking about getting in. Uh, look, uh, it just right now Rivera's is just unable really to make a dent in uh, Santa Cruz's you know persona right here. I mean, he's just he's not being he's not being able to hurt him. He's not landing anything of any consequence and. It's just a runaway right now. I mean, I, I hate to say it because I was expecting a little bit more from Rivera in terms of, you know, it's not that he isn't putting on a great performance, just he's not damaging or doing anything that's really being totally effective to win a round. Yeah, I, I think he's getting concerned with himself because he's, he's just ran, ran out of ideas. You know, he's done everything and nothing's really come through for him right now. Although he did land a good left hook coming out of that crouch right there. So, you know, but that's one... Uh, you know, in a, in a dozen, and he's trying, but like that right hand he just came in with that, it landed on the shoulder of Santa Cruz. If he's close to him, he's going to get hit. If he's far, he still gets hit. That's so, right. You know, so uh, uh, what he should be doing is the in and out, the in and out, mixing up the, the distance. It's not for the lack of trying. I mean, he just made like a, a three weave move right there and came out with left hook and again, just had a hard time landing in square. A look at the total number of punches landed, 235 for Santa Cruz, Rivera. That's what he's got to do. He's got to mix it up right there. Hope, hopefully something in between those flurries he can land and buzz uh, Santa Cruz. Rivera now at 115, 25 seconds remaining in round nine, scheduled for 12 here in Los Angeles for the WBA World Featherweight Belt. Ten seconds remaining in round nine. Oh, oh big ferry by Rivera. Good right hand by Rivera. Rivera got caught right there. Whoever says something to you, sometimes it weighs a little more than when others say it. All right, let's get it back over to Kenny, Joe, and Lennox. All right, thanks very much, Kate. Round ten underway, scheduled for 12. Well, I thought at the end of that round, it, Rivera did what he he's, should have been doing all along, and that's, well, not all along, but at least the last three or four rounds. He's trying to go for broke. He's got to make something happen. He's got to catch Leo in the middle of a combination with a big punch. And he, he had a little success doing that in the, at the very end of that round. So I think he's got to pick up where he left off and start, you know, opening up and doing that, making him punch back and flurry with him. That's his only chance. Yeah, he's only willing to do that like at the last 30 seconds of the fight. I think he's afraid that he might punch himself out or something. Obviously, it takes a lot of energy, but you know, if you if you want to win, you've got to do some unconventional things and count on your conditioning to, to get you through it. He's got to keep that up. See, you throw that right hand, don't just pull back out. You know, you throw that right hand, stay in the pocket there, and, and try to get Leo into a slugfest. Yeah, I agree. And just throwing the right hand and then coming back out. You can't just throw a right hand and come back out. you got to throw a combination at least and then come back out because if you throw three punches, at least one will hit. If you throw one punch, it'll miss. Chances are, right. But, you know, again, uh, Rivera's basically abandoned his jab, too. You know, when you start throwing those lead right hands like that and abandoning your jab. Oh, see, there you go. Now, he got the whistle to Rivera. He opened up, and he's trying to make a slugfest here. He's trying to land something of significance, but he did get the worst of that last flurry. You see Santa Cruz keeps that head just buried in his chest. He never pokes up his head to, to let himself get popped. Final minute. Round 10, Santa Cruz has thrown over 1,000 punches to this point. Rivera and just under 650. We referenced that first fight between Santa Cruz and Mares, the PBC fight of the year back in 2015. There were over 2,000 combined punches in that one. Well, you know, and you look at the stats right there. Look, I mean, Santa Cruz has thrown over a thousand punches already, and I'm not exactly like Mars, but Rivera's thrown quite a number of punches over the course of this fight. And you know, where are we at? 1,600 punches, basically. That's a lot of punches in, in 10 rounds. Santa Cruz doesn't have to look for Rivera. Rivera's always in front of him. So all he has to do is throw straight punches, which he is. Throw straight punches in forward and straight uppercuts. 
Again, you're right. He saves it for the end of the round. Yep. Rivera. Let's listen in to the corner of Rafael Rivera. You're not doing, okay? He's not doing anything to you. No, 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 no. Do not provoke shots that he's hitting you. Make sure you get up first. You gotta start looking for the draw now. We're getting into the later rounds. There's no danger. Go in. Don't pressure yourself. Just go in. Try to get that shot. He always okay, pressures me. Okay, then you do your job. Come on. He's not pressuring you. And here you see some great action by both boxers throwing at will, basically. They realize there's the last 30 seconds left, so they're both throwing punches. Leo loves that. He loves that fighting. And of course, Rivera's trainer is telling him exactly what we're kind of exhorting him to do, which is to get in there and, you know, just make a brawl of it at this point. You know, he says you don't have much time left, and he doesn't. He's got two rounds left, and he's got a... But he also said you're not doing that enough, that you should be doing more of trying to get in there and land a shot. In other words, get lucky. So on the second time, Rivera has gone past 10 rounds in his professional career in his 31st bout. Tenth time for Santa Cruz, including five of his last seven. Round 11 for the WBA World Featherweight Championship. And Leo Santa Cruz doesn't have to change anything. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Rivera's really not listening to his corner. His corner is, you know, is really pushing him to put some pressure on to get inside. And then Rivera said, well, he's pressuring me, you know. Uh, you know, it's kind of contradictory, but uh, he's not listening to his corner, and it's not going to get any better for well, Rivera. Not, like you said, it's not easy for him to get to go in against Santa Cruz, because Santa Cruz, if you go in against him, he's throwing punches to hit you. And all he's doing is running into Santa Cruz's punches. Midway through, round 11, scheduled for 12. He doesn't have much of a choice at this point. If you want to win the fight and you can't pull fights out, I doubt it's going to happen in the next couple rounds. But if he wants to try to make it happen, he's going to have to do something differently, and that's put on pressure and just get the slugfest going. And that's Rivera's job to do, and he's not doing it. Rio Santa Cruz in control. Final minute, round 11. Well, he's got, he's got Santa Cruz boxed in in the corner. He should take advantage of that right now. Santa Cruz has taken his time. He's, he's lulling him in. He wants him to come in. But he's not going to make him make him an easy time for him. He's, he's not going to be an easy target either. What are you saying? He's having a good time? Just uh, yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at playing cat and mouse with him there. He's, he's switching to the left side, then he's switching to the right side. So he's doing what he wants to do in there. Yeah, I'm afraid Rivera just doesn't have the firepower to make a dent. At this point, no. In Santa Cruz's armor, I really don't. I'm not sure if, if Santa Cruz put his hands down and let him hit him square that he could hit him. See? All Santa Cruz has to do is throw out his punches in this round. This should be the best round for Rivera right now. He should really go for broke. This is the fourth time in the last five bouts that Santa Cruz has gone into the 12th round. He's gone the distance in three of his last four. Winning two of the three. His only loss came at the hands of Paul Frampton four fights ago back in July of 2016. And of course, came back and avenged that loss and won the title back. But uh, 108 101, Santa Cruz on uh, Larry Hazard's unofficial scorecard. Nearly 1,200 punches thrown by Santa Cruz. 
and some of them came like a machine gun. <laughs> Closing in on 2,000 combined, Joe, for this fight. You know, seeing Santa Cruz fight live and in front of you, and uh, when you really get to see his skills on display, he's so good defensively. Right? Just like those guys right there. I mean, we're very good for Blake, and he has to. Yeah, yeah, his hand got caught in the ropes there, but his left hand, sometimes that usually, you know, you can hurt a muscle or, or a bone, but he was okay on that one. Yeah, that happens every so often, but it goes to show you, even with one hand, he was making the kid miss. So, um, you know, his boxing skills are just really, really superlative uh, to Santa Cruz. He's just a great, great fighter all the way around, and he's a tough guy to beat. Zoner lost once, 35, one and one. Fighting in a world championship fight for the 16th time in his career. It just makes you miss so easily, you know. One minute remaining in this 12th and final round. Yeah, Santa Cruz is really going to need uh, this, you know, it's going to take some real stiff competition, you know, somebody, another champion to, to give him a real fight. Oh, yeah. He's that good. He loves to fight. He's enjo he enjoyed this fight. Yeah. Chance of Leo from the crowd here in Los Angeles. Santa Cruz born in L.A. 17 of his... 38 bouts have taken place in the state of California. Down to the final 10 seconds. Reverse it. Let's go. And they're going at it. Santa Cruz and Rivera go the distance. Tremendous action over those final 10 seconds of round 12. And the great thing is Santa Cruz obliged him. He said, sure, I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, well, fans, after 12 rounds of action, the judges are in agreement. All three score the bout 119 to 109 in favor of the unanimous decision winner, and still the WBA featherweight champion of the world, El Famoso Terremoto, Leo Santa Cruz. His fiance loves this. Why wouldn't she? Maritza, as Leo Santa Cruz retains his belt, the total punches. 1,273 by Santa Cruz, landed 26%, and over 800 for Rafael Rivera. I think nearly half may have come in the last 10 seconds. Look, they're right, but that's 120, basically 120 punches around average. That's a lot of punches. Nobody really sustains that type of output. Over 2,000 in the bout as Leo Santa Cruz goes to 36, one and one. Still the WBA World Featherweight Champ. He is with Heidi. Thank you very much, guys. Leo, it is always fun to watch a Leo Santa Cruz fight. Congratulations to you. Did you expect this, though, to go the distance? First of all, thank you. Thank you to all the fans that came out here to support me. Uh, I really appreciate it. And yeah, you know, like I said, I tried to give my best. I, I did what I could. I, I think, uh, you know, I would have tried, I would love to give him a lot better, but, you know, uh, Rafael is a tough opponent. Like I said, he's really tough. I got him to the body really good. He didn't go down. I got him to the head. You know, he's a tough fighter. Speaking of the fans, you got in a little trouble with your dad early on. He said, don't fight for the fans. <laughs> you fight this fight the way we trained in training camp. Your dad, he's battling cancer. How much does it mean to you right now to continue to win and win and win for him. Oh, I mean, the word to me, you know, uh, the first thing that when I step in the ring is I don't want to let my dad down. I want to win so he could be happy and he could continue fighting with cancer. And, you know, I thank God. I thank the fans for the support that they gave me to win this fight. Congratulations on a great win. Let's talk about what's next because you have said you want to unify with Gary Marshall. I'm uh, sorry, Gary Russell. <laughs> you want to, pardon me, you want to unify this belt potentially with Gary Russell Jr. Then 
maybe move up to 130 pounds. What is next for you? Yeah, you know, I won the best. I won a unified belt uh, against anybody. You know, the champion Oscar Valdez, Gary Russell, George Warrington, even a third fight against Carl Frampton. You know, any of those fights, I won them. When would you want to fight next? Uh, I think maybe June or July. I'll be, I want to be back. I want to fight three times this year and hopefully against all the, the opponents I name. Excellent. We're looking forward to seeing you back in the ring. Congratulations on another incredible win. Kenny, we'll send it back to you.